Arctic Star Exploration, operated by a team of proven mine finders, is focused on diamonds in Finland and the Northwest Territories of Canada. A work program is planned for our Finland property that contains diamond-bearing kimberlite. Arctic Star trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ADD, and the Frankfurt Exchange, symbol 82A1. Please visit our website at arcticstar.ca or call us at 604-689-1799. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Ted Dixon, CEO and co-founder of IncResearch.ca, Canada's first online financial news and research service, providing insider news and knowledge to investors. Welcome back to the show, Ted. Well, it's great to be back, Jim. I just noticed... Canadian Finance Minister Bill Morneau says his tax department is going after, quote, dead money, unquote, parked in small business. If you've saved up money to expand your business, is it just dead? Well, why doesn't Bill Morneau go after some real live money that's flowing through uh, Vancouver casinos and the real estate industry that's not being taxed? You know, this is all getting just a little much, this class warfare rhetoric from the tax fairness crowd, you know, who insist, you know, that uh, doctors are cheating the system uh, by, you know, organizing their affairs legally, you know, as uh, under rules that are existing, and that uh, it's really, you know, some rich uh, entrepreneurs who are, you know, who are benefiting from this. And, uh, you know, it's just all getting a little much when, you know, right underneath their noses here in Vancouver, there's massive amounts of money that's not being taxed. You know, you know what I want to know, Jim, is where are the tax fairness uh, advocates? Where are the professors? Where are the tax people, you know, who, who are wanting to clobber small business and the and the psychology behind small business, which is even a bigger impact, you know, with what's going on here. Where are they with all this money laundering that's going on? How come they're not out demanding uh, that uh, the federal government get this under control? Because it's much easier to go to conferences and talk about the little charts and graphs and, and, and throw out some spreadsheets. The fact of the matter is that if you're a small business person playing by the rules in Canada, you're a sitting duck by, uh, for these academics and these tax collectors, and, you know, so you're, you're easy pickings for them. But to go and chase down money laundering in a casino, that's really hard work. And, you know, to, to fix the tax system so that, uh, you, you know, real estate flippers uh, pay their fair share, you know, or what they're supposed to be paying, never mind their fair share, just what they're supposed to be paying, well, that's a lot of hard work. And, you know, so it's much easier to go after people who are, you know, actually filling out their tax forms, playing by the rules. You know, get let's squeeze them a little bit more. You know, it's just getting a little much. And, you know, when this government, uh, you know, starts to roll this out, I don't think I knew it was getting itself into. It's doubling down. It's a big mistake. You know, uh, we're already starting to see some polls showing the Conservative Party moving up. Um, I know, it, it, you know, there's only there's only one that I've known so far that, that's shown that. But, you know, keep this up. And uh, they're really risking uh, a lot of political capital here that they don't need to do. I mean, why they're doing this is just beyond me. You know, they, they uh, as we've said on this show time and time again, they got they've got off, they got off to a great start. The the new government, they uh, you know they they made some policy choices. Not, not I didn't agree with all of them, um, but they're working. But now they're going in this direction that they're going to undo all, all the good stuff that they've done. And, uh, you know, they're at risk of losing the next election. It's really remarkable. And so, you know, I've just, you know, I've ha had enough of Bill Morneau trying to justify his position. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's gotten himself uh, hoodwinked by these tax collectors in the, in the rev, in the revenue department and a bunch of academics. And, you know, it's just not practical. Okay, you know, sure, there's abuse, there's abuses to the system. Uh, there's some people have organized their affairs to avoid Bill Morneau's tax increase, uh, uh from, uh, 2016. You know that's that's life. That's the way it is. And uh, when you when you when you try and raise taxes, people are going to try and, and and get around them legally. And that's what people have been doing. So okay, try and fix that, but don't uh, do a full frontal assault on uh, small business culture in Canada when uh, you're letting money laundering go right under your nose. I mean, let's have some priorities here. Let's you know let's get people who aren't uh, playing by the rules. Let's deal with them first. 
you know, and then once you've dealt with them, then come back and say, okay, you know, we have to fix these problems over here in the small business sector and take your time doing it and do it right. But, you know, anyway, the, that's the, the, um, the, uh, the road that, uh, Bill Morneau and Justin Trudeau uh, have, uh, decided to take, and it's going to cost them a lot in the Vancouver area, because we know, Jim, what's going on here. People, voters in Vancouver know what's going on. They know that small business is not the problem. They know that when it comes to tax fairness, it's not with small business. It's with money laundering and people who aren't declaring their income. That's where the problem is, and I'm afraid just about every liberal MP in lower mainland is going to lose their seat if the federal government doesn't, uh, do something about that, and, you know, and gear down on small business and gear up on money laundering, but you know, uh, aside from that, I mean, it, it's 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 you know, not not hard for me certainly to get worked up on what the federal government's doing. Um, you know, they have they did do a few things right when they got in, and the Canadian economy is benefiting from that right now, and the Canadian stock market is benefiting from that. So let's hope. Let's hope they uh, refocus and keep the the good momentum going because you know uh, until they brought in this 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 July disaster uh, consultation paper you know things things were moving along pretty pretty sweet here in Canada. Well, too the the facts of the case both in Canada and the U.S. Small business is the vast majority supplier of jobs over seventy percent in Canada. Roughly one point seven million small business owners. Trudeau did not win by a landslide. Of course, he got a majority, but you look at the numbers, uh, winning seats by 200 votes here, 400 votes there. Uh, I could see small shop owners just saying, if you're going to attack my future savings, I'm not going to vote for you. So there goes 1.7 million votes. Plus, when they said income sprinkling for farms, L five-year-old children were on the list. When I was five years old on the farm, I was picking potatoes. I remember well before going to school, I was uh, employed pretty heartily, weeding the garden and uh, picking potatoes for the farm. Well, uh, I think they they stopped the under eighteen uh, sprinkling, and I you know I'm not a tax expert in terms of details, and this is the other problem with this proposal is that if they go through, uh, it, it's going to be a, a you know uh, just a field day for tax auditors because they'll be able to go into every small business that's doing uh, dividends and say, okay, well, who's getting the dividend? Okay, well, why is your wife getting the dividend, Jim? Oh, well, because, you know, she's doing the books. Oh, really? Well, how much, you know, what is she doing for the books? Like, well, how much is she doing? Well, we have to see if that's reasonable. Well, how much is she getting paid? You know, and so, you know, so you're going to have tax auditors uh, interviewing and going through with a fine-tooth comb, all these small businesses. Meanwhile, down at the casino, you know, you've got $20 bills being brought in, and no, no one's uh, following up on these things. And, you know, the, 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 the money laundering industry is, uh, is having a field day. So it doesn't make any sense. You know, it, well, sure, it, the, the I've government's got to get its priorities straight. Right, and, and I've gone into businesses and nightclubs as well. The place is dead. I mean, they're not doing anything to promote it. And yes, well, why isn't this place more popular? Oh, the owners are just using it at, for tax purposes. You know, so obviously it's being used for money laundering. They don't care. Well, the, uh, if uh, Justin Trudeau doesn't recalibrate, uh, they're gonna they're, they're gonna they're gonna feel it in the Lower Mainland. The rest of Canada is kind of oblivious to what goes on uh, in in the Lower Mainland to their detriment. I think you know this is one mistake that policymakers in Canada do. They ignore. What what, hap, what 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 is happening on the west coast? You know Brian Mulroney and uh, when he when they were running uh, again on free trade in 1988, they, you know Eastern Canada was fixated on free trade, and so it should have been. But but in British Columbia there was uh, a big fight going on about the GST. Uh, it, it, you know we picked up on it here first. Now. Uh, the, the, you know, the Conservative Party totally ignored what, uh, the message that British Columbia was sending uh, in, uh, in about the GST, and we know what happened to the Conservative Party in the next election. Now, I'm not saying, you know, I, I'm not opposed to, to, to GST. I'm just saying there was a message that was being sent in British Columbia that that Central Canada ignored to their to their to their political peril. Well, and, don't forget, too, British Columbia organized a very difficult to pass referendum. To kill the HST, so that's how we felt about it. Well, that's right, and you know, uh, so I mean, it's it's not just uh, Ottawa policymakers that can get get uh, the pulse of uh, of British Columbians wrong. Uh, our own provincial politicians can uh, have done a good job of that as well. But look, you know, uh, I, you know, 
there's a lot of good things that are going on in Canada. Let's let's you know I I'm uh, I'm you know I'm I'm fairly disappointed uh, on the, the way the government's handling small business. You know if we can get back on track. Um, you know, it's, I think it's doing a, a decent job on the NAFTA file. Uh, you know, we seem to be, I mean, we won't know, we don't know what's going on, but we seem to be doing well there. And the Canadian stock market, you know, is reacting very well. You know, we- And we'll talk about that, Ted, right after the break. Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp., RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain's Brunswick property is located in the Ridout Shear Zone in Ontario, with grab samples running as high as 32 grams per ton gold. A follow-up drill program to test the numerous targets located by recent groundwork will commence later this year. Please visit our website at rmroyalty.com. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ted Dixon. As we said just before we had our break that uh, the Canadian stock market is picking up. What's behind it and why is there finally some spirit going into the uh, TSX? Well, it's a stealth rally. I, I think Canadians are still in a, a bit of a disbelief. You know, uh, we hear the, you know, discussions like we just had before the break about mistakes that the government is making. But uh, the underlying uh, fundamentals of the Canadian economy are, are doing much better, thanks in part to the strength of the Canadian uh, workforce and the ingenuity of Canadians in the high-tech and energy sectors, for example, of uh, the recovery in the energy sector. A lot has to do with, you know, talent in the energy sector that's adapted to uh, uh, to uh, changing times. So we've seen a, a, an uptick in the energy sector, and we also see forestry stocks and paper stocks doing very well because you've got a determined industry that's pressing ahead uh, in very tough times. You know, we've got very seasoned uh, paper and forest product companies. So the Inc. Canadian Cider Index, which tracks uh, 50 uh, stocks preferred by insiders, it's a mid-cap oriented index. You know, uh, as of this morning, Jim, it was only uh, one and a half points away from its all-time high. And when you include dividends on a total return basis, it is at an all-time high. Now, the TSX is a little further behind. Uh, I like to think that insiders tend to uh, lead the broad market. The TSX is about 2%, I think, uh, off its all-time high. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're getting there. And, uh, you know, we've been overshadowed by uh, the U.S. market for the last few years. But a lot of that's been driven by funny monetary policy, you know, that's juiced asset prices, just as we've seen real estate, uh, you know, get juiced in Canada. Uh, the United States has seen the stock market get juiced. Um, now, in Canada, the stock market rebound uh, seems to be a little bit more fundamentally driven. It's being reflected by uh, strong uh, uh, resource uh, stock uh, performance, both, you know, in mining and now um, mining paper and now energy is coming back. Now we'll see if energy can keep some momentum going, but uh, certainly um, the oil patch uh, has done a lot of hard work in adjusting to the new reality, and I think the stock market is starting to sort out the winners and losers there, and the winners are now starting to be rewarded. So it's a good time uh, for the Canadian market. You know, of course, things can derail it. Uh, you know, we could have a geopolitical event. Uh, you know, we could have something out of Washington. Um, you know, NAFTA could break down. I mean, there's all sorts of risk, but that's always the case. You always have that in, in investing. Um, the fact of the matter is, uh, in the real estate market, people began to believe there's no risk. And in Toronto, I think that, uh, you know, that, that's that been uh, shown to be not a valid assumption. And, you know, Vancouver is, of course, driven by a whole bunch of factors uh, unrelated to fundamentals, uh, including some of those uh, money laundering, um, you know, issues that we talked about a bit earlier. So uh, the Canadian market will always have some risk, but uh, it's been overlooked in terms of stocks. And, it, you know, it's quietly uh, uh, making some new highs here. So, uh, you, you know, uh, those investors who have shunned it, um, you know, uh, because they think that the 
grass is greener on the other side in the United States, I think, uh, you know, it's time to at least uh, take a hard look at, you know, at what we have going going for us here in Canada, and let's hope that the federal government doesn't blow it with its uh, <laughs> with its uh, class warfare, small business uh, agenda, which uh, makes uh, no sense. One thing that uh, American commentators, when I ask them why is it that the federal governments in Canada and the U.S. don't like small business, they said, well, specifically, uh, if you look at Trump's cabinet, it's made up of billionaires. So, of course, billionaires get looked after. Large corporations have lobbyists to make sure their interests are looked after. But the guys who own, you know, mom and dad who own the corner store or run the farm, they're not in Washington or Ottawa telling them this is what we do, this is why we deserve tax breaks, this is what we do for the country. They're not there because they're busy working. Well, you know, as Mark Faber has pointed out uh, many times, you know, this whole, the whole Western democracy uh, development uh, over the last few decades has really benefited large corporations because as you get more and more rules and more and more complicated tax systems, the only the, the mom and pop stores can't afford to deal with that, and they, they don't have the expertise uh, to deal with complicated tax systems and rules. But you know, a large you know, Starbucks does, right? I mean, and that's why you've got uh, these types of large uh, retail conglomerates uh, emerging because they have the economies of scale to deal with all these uh, tax uh, issues. Now, look, you know, Jim, let's say you want to start uh, a, a, a logistics business in Vancouver. You want to, I don't know, deliver, help deliver milk to people, right? Okay, you're going to, you, you want to do it through the lower mainland. Okay, what, so what do you have to do? You have to do how many municipalities and get permits. And you know what they're going to do when you go to the, the city hall to get your permit? They're going to say, Jim, stand in line, you know, over there, and here's how it's going to cost. And oh, we're going to send an inspector around, and you know, when you open up your 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 storefront, and we'll see, and you better be earthquake proof. Okay, Amazon wants to come to town. What do we have? The red carpet. You know, everyone stops. I mean, even the mayor on a trip to China has found time to re, re, you know <laughs> reply to to media inquiries. You know, but oh, of course we want Amazon. Oh, please come Amazon. You know, but if you're a small business person, you you know you're told to stand in line, right? You take a number. So you know, it, it uh, our system really has gotten out of whack and. That's why it's uh, it's really disheartening uh, to see the Trudeau Morneau uh, priorities being focused on small business uh, the way it has been when there's so many other areas that uh, they can be and should be uh, tackling. We'll have more with Ted Dixon right after this. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Keep informed. Receive our weekly recap of thought-provoking articles, podcasts, and radio delivered to your inbox for free. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage, HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're chatting with Ted Dixon. Ted, of course, the U.S. Department of Commerce has slapped an over 200% tariff on the C-Series aircraft made by Bombardier, claiming... It's heavily subsidized by the Canadian government. Well, it was a bailout, no different than the U.S. government bailing out the auto companies or the big banks there after their crash. Uh, why, you know, 220 percent, 25 percent on an aircraft that Boeing doesn't even produce? And I must say, the Prime Minister said a few days ago, "If you're going to sue us, don't think we're going to buy your fighter jets." Well, you know, trying to compare, uh, trying to compare, uh, air, aircraft, uh, aircraft and defense industry bailouts is kind of like, you know, going to a dog show trying to compare the different breeds. You know, there's like, uh, all different shapes and sizes of them. And to say that one ba- bailout is illegal and another bailout is legal, I mean, this is the type of game you get into in these multi-billion dollar industries, okay? So, on the one hand, you know, I'm sympathetic with Bombardier in terms of what's happened with the Americans. I mean, it's just a little rich uh, to, you know, 
to see what's going on there. On the other hand, this is their business that they play in. This is not, you know, this is not news to them. We shouldn't be naive. This goes on all the time. Uh, and we just happen to have a U.S. administration that's even more willing to uh, use uh, trade uh, to, you know, trade rules to its own benefit. And we'll see how it plays out. Uh, you know, these, this tariff hasn't been implemented yet. And, uh, you know, there's still a long way to go before it actually gets implemented. There'll be a lot of lobbying, horse jockeying, there's stuff behind the scenes that the, you know, typical Canadian isn't aware of and probably, you know, just as well, um, because it's, uh, you know, very, um, you know, uh, very focused on a couple of key industries, important industries, you know, and, uh, you know, aerospace uh, is very important. It's just unfortunate that uh, uh, the way... It, business is conducted uh nation to nation uh you know it's just it's just not very competitive at all it's 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 a competition of lawyers and uh, lobbyists and uh, oh yeah and then we have the the, air, the actual products the airplane products themselves that, right and uh, the c series yeah. is an, an international project the wings are made in the UK the engines are made in the US so if the thing gets canceled or or shut back, it's American workers will suffer as well. Absolutely. I mean, that's how our trade between Canada and the U.S. works. The average object that's Canadian slash U.S. made crosses the border seven times before it's sold. Well, eventually, you know, the, the narrative might switch back to that. Uh, you know, Trump has done a great job just focusing on the, you know, the negative parts of, of, of trade, and that's the displacement of, of people who, who lose out. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, what's been forgotten is, is, you know, the gains. Now look what's happening, uh, in the United States with, uh, in the wake of the hurricanes. Well, we know that the assault on the Canadian softwood lumber industry has hurt workers in Canada. What is not, has not been so clear is what the impact would be on Americans. But now it's starting to dawn on a few people, oh, you know, uh, lumber prices have gone up. Well, why is that? Well, because your government's restricting the flow of lumber into the country. Oh, well, maybe that's not such a smart thing. No, maybe it isn't, right? So the narrative will slowly change, although you will have many lobbyists and people who are, you know, uh, who are, who profit from the status quo to try and douse that narrative from, from, from taking hold. But people, you know, do have, uh, you know, do see what's going on and eventually, uh, common sense tends to prevail, but just getting to that point uh, is not necessarily fast and it can be quite frustrating. But, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see how the softwood lumber, uh, dispute now, um, unfo uh, unfolds because, uh, right now, you know, we've had the pain in Canada. Well, now the pain is being felt, uh, in the United States. So let's see how that one plays out. Ted, anything else you wanted to add to today's show? Well, just keep your eye on the in Canadian Insider Index. Uh, you can visit, you can visit CanadianInsider.com. We have it in real time. The uh, all-time high was uh, 12, 17, 11, and we're uh, we're knocking on that door. Let's see if we break through uh, by the time we have our chat next uh, next two weeks. Ted, thanks a lot for chatting with us. Great to be back. His website, CanadianInsider.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. If you have any questions for the show or our guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.